So in this part of the semester, we're moving into a new topic, which is visualizations. And so to tie it together with what we've been doing, I'm going to start by explaining how we can create a dashboard um, using Flask and uh, Matplotlib. And basically the idea is we're going to have this website which has some plots on it. And, uh, and over time, well, there's new data points collected. And so whenever you visit the website, you see a plot of um, whatever is there. Um, and this is a type of um, data science work that some might do. So I'm going to close this and start from scratch as I try to build this thing. And so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to create a new .py file. So down here, I'm going to go text file and I'm going to call this um, uh, maybe demo.py, dot like so. And, um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over here to uh, the terminal and I'm going to SSH to my, my virtual machine. And I'm going to CD to where I have all my stuff, which is under here, 26. Right, I have my demo.py there. And the idea is, well, I'm going to be running over here. I'm going to say something like Python 3 demo.py, and that'll start Flask in the background, and then I'll be able to visit the web page. So, so over here um, in my file, I have to do some imports to start. So, so one thing I have to do is I have to um, say from uh, Flask, import Flask. And, uh, and with Flask, I can make new Flask objects. And, and kind of a typical name for that might be something like application. And so I'm going to create a new Flask object. And, and I have to give it a name. And, and a very common thing is to name it after my file. So I'm inside of demo.py. If, if I could name it something like this, that's going to pull out some sort of name that kind of captures what, what I'm currently running. Um, the, the details aren't too important there. Um, down at the end, I actually want to run this thing. So down here, I'm going to say app.run. And, um, and, uh, and I want to run on uh, the public IP address that I'll be able to access this site. And so I'm going to do that. And, and then up here, I can create all of these um, functions uh, that are routes. So I can say uh, at app.route, that's my decorator. And I can say that um, I want to, um, for my home page, I want to run this function, right? So here I'm just going to say return hi1. And, uh, and I'm going to come over here now and, and copy my IP address. And um, well, let me actually run it, right? If I don't run it, nothing happens. I right, run my demo like that. And, uh, and then I'm going to open this in a new window. And it doesn't work because I'm listening on IP address or, or on port number 5000. And so I should put 5000 here, like so. And there it is, it's high one. And so that's all good. You know, if I change this up to something like high two and then save that and then uh, refresh it, notice it's still running the old version of my site. And so one of the things that I can do to make it auto reload is I can pass in when I say run, I can say debug equals true. And then if I run it and refresh over here, well, it's high two. Let me, let me change it to high three now. Uh, I refresh and I get high three. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. And, um, and then I don't have to really worry about this running in the background. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put these two windows side by side. So I'm gonna tile that to the left, and that one to the right. And, uh, and here I am, I can start creating my uh, dashboard, right? I head over here and I can refresh this. Let me just make sure this is in a good environment here. So this is good, right? I'm, I'm, when I'm going to the right, I'm just hitting Command R to refresh it. So let's try to create a real web page and um, and I could do it different ways. I could create like an index.html and I could read that. Alternatively, I could create a big string right here. And I'm gonna use triple quotes because my string passes over multiple lines. And so I could just type my HTML code here. Uh, maybe I'll say body. Remember that um, in, a, in a professional HTML page, everything is inside of body and HTML. Um, I can put a, a h1 up here and maybe i'll call this um values maybe i'll call it something like errors over time i want to actually uh, think about what we are actually measuring right so i'm going to do something like that and then after that i can have some sort of image i can say image equals or image source equals something and i can call this well let's call it plot.svg right so i'm going to do that and, uh, and then I want to actually return this HTML here at the end. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to run it over here. 
and you see I have this errors over time, and um, and I don't actually have anything for that figure, right? You see that um, it's not loading, right? Now, when my web browser on the right loaded this page, first it loaded in this HTML and displayed that, and then it asked my uh, server for this plot.svg, and, uh, and of course I didn't have it, right? So that's what I need to do now. I need to make sure I can actually return this thing back um, back to uh, back to the web browser, right? So um, for that, let's say um, I have to do some imports if we actually want to make a plot. Um, I have to say from uh, import pandas as pd from matplotlib import pi plot as plt, and um, then down here, what I'm going to do is create another function, right? So I'm going to say, I'm going to call this plot. I could really call it whatever I wanted. And I know I'm going to get a request for this plot.svg, right? Because when somebody visits the home page, then the web browser on the right is going to ask for that next. So here I should say at app.route. And, uh, and I should paste that, right? So I have an opportunity to return that SVG file when I do that. And so maybe for now, I'm just going to return to do and save that and refresh on the right. And still nothing happens because to do is not a real, um, it's not a real uh, page, right? So and if I refresh this over here, I can just hung there for a minute. So what I want to do is I want to somehow create a new plot and then return it down here. So I'm going to say something like this. I'm going to say fig ax equals plot dot subplots. Um, Remember that sometimes I might have one big figure that has a lot of different uh, plots within them. Um, so the figure is the whole thing, and then the AX is a area within there that has its own axes. And somehow I'd like to do something like this. I'd like to return that, uh, but I have to return uh, SVG data. Um, so you might hope that I could do something like this. I wish I could do this, what I'm doing now, um, but I can't because figure objects in matplotlib don't have that method. So I need to have some other strategy for creating that data so I can actually return it, right? So I'm gonna have to return something here. And uh, my strategy is that um, I can save this to an SVG file and, uh, and then read, an S read that SVG file back in. And, uh, and by that process, I'll actually be able to get the, the data. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna say fig.save fig. And um, I have to give it a, a file here. And so let me actually do that. I'm going to say with open, I'll just call it temporary.svg. And I want to write to it. And um, I'm going to try to save it. I'm going to try to save it to that thing. Right, so I'm going to do that. Maybe I'll just leave this as to do for now. Let's see how this is working. Um, so I'm going to refresh this on the right. And you see that I have a, a big problem, right? Um, oh, well, my big problem is I, I, I didn't type that correctly. Let me actually, where is my other window? Um, excuse me. There we go. I kind of lost that there for a minute. Too many tabs open. Okay, there we go. So, so my problem is I'm... I need to have this. That, that crashed, I guess, when I, I changed it that way. So I do this, then refresh this thing. And OK. So the error I'm getting down here is that when I write that file, uh, it, it must be a string and, and not bytes. Why does it want to have a string? Because I open it up with uh, uh, W. W means um, string mode. If I want to write bytes to it, I have to open it with WB. And if I open it with WB, well, this is going to work later. So I'm going to hit refresh here, and uh, and it didn't show me anything yet, but hopefully it actually created this temp.svg over here, and um, and it did, right? So so that's all good. Um, what I'm going to do now is actually try to read it in and uh, return the values there. So I saved it. I'm going to say with open temp.svg, and I want to read it in binary format as f. Then I can return. I can return whatever I return from, well, whatever is in that file. So I can return f.read. Okay, so let, let's give this another shot. So I'm gonna refresh over here. And now I'm actually getting, I'm actually getting my plot, right? It's showing up on the page, which is good. 
Okay. So let's uh, let, let's think about how we can simplify this a little bit. It's kind of silly, right, that I have to write a file just so that I can uh, read it. And um, it turns out that we can have these um, fake uh, files that are called buffers that I can write data to and use them. And a lot of these are inside of the I.O. module. So I can say something like this in, in, in Python. I can say from I.O. import, and then I could have something like string I.O. That would be a fake text file. I can have bytes I.O., which would be a fake bytes file. And so if I do that, I can create one of these things down here. I can say buff equals bytes I.O. And then I don't need any of this. Um, actually, just to try to be consistent with what we've been doing, I'm just going to call that thing F2. I'm going to save it to here. And then when I want to return, I don't actually have to read from a file because I have this fake file, um, which is f. And uh, and I can just say f dot, uh, actually it's get value, sorry. I can do that, right? I can save my figure to my fake file, which is really actually a bytes IO object. And then when I want to, I can get the, uh, the value back here. So I'm going to refresh this and um, and why is it unhappy there? Uh, because I'm not really writing something reasonable. I want to say, I don't have to read it. I just want that value. Okay, so let me refresh that. And, uh, and we're still good. We still have this plot here. So let me do this. I actually want to have some um, values that are printed inside of there. So I'm going to have these um, values up here. I'm going to say like one, two, three. And um, and then down here, I can actually plot those to this AX object. So I can say, um, I can create a pandas series and uh, from those values, and then I can plot it. I can plot a, a line plot inside of that region. And so I run this and you see, I get this nice plot here, right? It looks great. Maybe let me actually make this a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna say something like fig size equals um, three by two, just so it fits a little bit cleaner in the screen. Uh, and, and that looks straight, right? So I can have that nice line plot. And, and just to try to make the demo like I, I had before, I'm imagining that I'm taking some sort of measurements over time and uh, recording it there. So um, let me, every time I visit the home page, I'm just gonna say values.append, and then I wanna have some sort of random value here. So I'm actually gonna come up here and I'm going to say um, import random. And then down here I can say random.randint. Give me an integer between, I don't know, one and, one and six. I'm going to do that. And then it's going to start showing it over here when I refresh that. Um, the other thing I want to do to clean this up a bit is I want to set some X and Y labels. So um, maybe, on the, maybe on that X axis, I'm going to say, um, let, let's say that's time, right? And then on the Y axis, um, I will call that um, errors. So who knows, maybe I'm running some sort of manufacturing process and I'm trying to see over time how many uh, kind of misformed uh, gadgets am I producing, right? So you can imagine lots of cases where you'd want to have a dashboard measuring something in the real world. And so now I can see that there's this process and I keep going and, and eventually, well, it, it, could go on as long as I wanted to, right? Anybody can at any point in time um, see what's happening. Great, so let me just make a quick recap of the key ideas here. One is that um, for some pages or resources, I might return HTML that references other resources. So every time I visit this page, uh, I, the browser first loads this, and then it also sends a request for plot.svg, and, um, and it loads that too and so I can dynamically create it. Another thing I see is um, down here, um, sometimes I can't always just directly generate the SVG. Sometimes I have to save things to a file before I can get the data. That's just you know the limitations of some of the modules we'll work with. And so things like um, Bytes.io will help us get around that. We can have these fake files called buffers that I can save data to and then pull it back from. And that's how I can create a nice dashboard like this. Okay, so the next time I may talk about some different ways we might want to um, track what's going on with our measurements.